Right, we start from the foundations of graph theory, the most basic of questions you can ever come across. The ability to draw um, graphs that are non-isomorphic. But first we remind each other that too, graphs, V and H, are called isomorphic. Are called isomorphic if there exists a one to one correspondence one-to-one -one correspondence. So now this is very important because this is the definition that we use all the time. So one-to-one um, -one correspondence between the vertices, the vertices in G, and the vertices, okay, and the vertices in H, okay, in H. Right, so we have that. Now, right in H. Right, okay. Such that. A pair of vertices are adjacent. in G if and only if the corresponding the corresponding pair of vertices are adjacent in what? In, in H. Right, so we just to look at this definition, which is the most important. So two graphs are isomorphic. Uh, right, so what is this thing that I've written here? What I've written here is actually the definition. The definition of isomorphic graphs. So two graphs, G and H, are called isomorphic if there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between the vertices in G and the vertices in H, such that a pair of vertices are adjacent in G if and only if the corresponding pair of vertices are adjacent in H. Okay. So this definition here speaks of something that we need to take note of, but not just take note of this, but um, always. The idea of a one-to-one -one correspondence, a one-to-one -one correspondence is extremely important. So you need to learn this and be in a position to understand this. Okay, now, what do we do? And how do we manage this? Right, so now in this question, we need to draw three non-isomorphic graphs. So these are sort of the basic questions I'm beginning with on graph theory. Um, three non-isomorphic graphs with four vertices and three edges. What kind of a graph is this? What kinds of graphs are these and how can these graphs be drawn? So we look at these together and we, 
we reason. Okay, here is the graph on four vertices. Vertex, vertex, because they're speaking of four vertices. Vertex, vertex, okay? So we have those vertices there. And then now these vertices are four of them. And so what do we do? But we need three edges. So we're gonna put an edge here. You can put an edge there. You can put an edge there. And so this is, this graph obviously has four vertices and three edges. Now, but we need non-isomorphic, right? So the non-isomorphism is suggested by the degrees of the um, corresponding vertices. So now we can also do vertex, 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 so that we have four vertices. And then now we need to draw three edges, right? So we can draw one edge, second edge, and third edge. So there are three edges here, right? And yet there are four vertices for this graph, right? But we need to draw up to three of them. So we draw the third one. Um, vertex, 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 vertex. So then what we do, we draw an edge here, for example, another edge here, another edge there, like this. So we agree therefore that we have, uh, uh, these graphs are non-isomorphic. How are these graphs non-isomorphic? Right, so the three graphs, right, the three graphs, are non-isomorphic. Non-isomorphic, because, why? Because. The first. Because the first has, has two vertices. There's two vertices of degree. Of degree one. Okay, so we have this one, vertex of degree one and that of degree one because there's one incident edge to it. Right, and moreover, the, the second graph, this one here, they need to always substantiate, that is the point. Uh, right, the second graph, has no vertices, right? So we need to just to um, write it clearly here. Right, so the second graph, now we just compare, we just substantiate on why this graph. So if the argument is draw, it's very important to substantiate why the graphs you have drawn are either isomorphic or non-isomorphic because they can ask you to draw either isomorphic or uh, non-isomorphic. Right, so um, the second graph has no vertices of degree one. So in other words, obviously you agree that this second graph, this is a vertex here is of degree two because there are two incident edges. This one is degree two. So obviously um, this graph has two vertices of degree one um, and uh, the other two vertices are, are of degree two, but this one does not have even one vertex of degree one. Okay, so uh, the second graph does not have a vertex of degree one. Right, so, um, right, the second graph has no, Vertices of degree one, right? And oh. the third graph, let's come in on the third graph. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, in the exam, I only need to show this. Yes, in the exam, you need to just draw. But ordinarily, you need to substantiate on why, depending on the case. But, but what is very important is the drawing. Okay, so, but obviously, by and large, if you draw, then you deserve all the marks. That is the point. 
If you draw, then you deserve all the marks. Right. So um, that's in, is pretty much enough because you're under exam conditions. Um, right. Um, and the third graph. The third graph would have a degree one, degree one, degree one, degree three. Right. So the third graph has um, three. vertices of degree right it has three vertices of degree one okay just some substantiation that if the graphs are were to be isomorphic if this one is two vertices of degree one each one must have two of them etc so yeah the drawings are the most important anyway uh, in particular under exam conditions uh, right, but it is standard practice to draw and substantiate based on what um, follows from the drawings in terms of which graphs are actually, um, in terms of whether the graphs are isomorphic and why will they be. But obviously, at this point, it's not so important to, it's not so important to obviously um, substantiate quite anyway, in particular under exam conditions. Right, so let's look at one more question. You need to know, um, we're just practicing here on how to draw graphs, right? Give an information in words. Like at this point, you're saying draw two nine isomorphic graphs with five vertices and six edges. Okay, five vertices. So first, normally we draw as if we draw a pentagon like this. Then you can join, join, join. Right, and then you can join, join. How many edges are here, for instance? So you can see there are two, four, five. So we just need one more edge. So we can connect like this because we need six edges and five vertices. So this one satisfies those conditions. Right, so we can also do draw another graph. So we can draw one vertex, two, three, four, and then do five here. We draw like this. We draw like that. We draw like that. We draw like that. So at this point, you have um, five vertices, two, four, five, and uh, obviously uh, three, six edges. Okay, so we have that. So um, in particular, we substantiate because we're learning on why we actually, we need to, because it helps us, the, the substantiation helps us to be in a position to understand the isomorphism um, of the graphs, but also to um, apply our uh, ourselves and be able to say when two graphs are not isomorphic, which is what is examinable. The next thing we're gonna be looking at in the exam when uh, graphs are given. So. The two graphs, the two graphs are non-isomorphic, right? They are non-isomorphic. Why? They are non-isomorphic because, right, they are non-isomorphic because, Right, so the two graphs are non-isomorphic because. Okay. Right. Because the second graph. Right, because the second graph. Has a vertex. Is a vertex of degree four. Okay, so in other words, so this is vertex. It has it is of degree four. So that one is a vertex of degree four. Okay, so we continue. 
Right, to the Phoenix of degree four. Okay, we'll continue. We continue. Right, so you know the second graph is a vertex of degree four. Um, right. While. While the first graph. Um, okay, while the first graph. Um, Right, while the first graph, right, uh-huh, while the first graph does not have. Does not have such a vertex. Right, the two graphs are non-isomorphic. They're not isomorphic. Why? Because this one is a vertex of degree four, while the first graph does not have such a vertex. So it's enough to say the two graphs are not isomorphic because if they ever they are isomorphic, then um, if there's a vertex of degree four, you must have um, a vertex of degree four there. But most importantly, if you have the vertex of the, the vertices of, the, of a certain degree in one graph, maybe this one, degree two, degree two, how many vertices of degree two here? There are four of them, okay? So here you would expect to have four vertices of uh, degree two, all right? But obviously if you count degree two, um, it's one, two, three, right? You can see that there are three of, uh, so these graphs can really be not at all isomorphic. And before you even consider the one-to-one -one correspondence that needs to exist, because once you observe if they ask if the graphs are isomorphic, you're gonna see, uh, we need to first observe if the degrees, um, uh, the, the same number of um, um, vertices of a certain degree exist in both graphs, if that is clear enough. Okay, next, uh, next question. Right, so this is what I was talking about yesterday. So if you're not asked to draw, yes, please. Uh, can we go back to the previous question? Okay, that's fine. Expect this ones, these questions tomorrow, multiple choice, y'all. Okay. We've never done a question where they're asked to, to draw two isomorphic graphs. So is that a, would that possibly come out? <laughs> yes, definitely. You can, we can draw two um, isomorphic graphs. Can we do an example? Okay, uh, yes, we can draw an example where we draw two isomorphic graphs. Okay, so, um, we have obviously there are lots of examples we can um we can draw um for example okay for i mean i would say let's look at this one like we can be able to draw two isomorphic graphs like here you know um that are um one way you can move a vertex to get non isomorphic graphs so isomorphic graphs are the easiest to do like um you can Take this vertex, you can pull this one inside here. So, or you can pull this one such that it's, it sits somewhere here. Okay, if you have this, and then you pull this one in this direction, what is gonna happen with that graph? Okay, let's look at that. So you'd have this, for example, and you'd have that. And then you'd have that, so you'd have those vertices there like that, right? And then now you pulled, well, just deliberately just moving the vertices in space, right? So if you move this one and you drag it further enough, so it's going to be sitting somewhere there, for example. 
Right. So if it's sitting somewhere there, the edges of a graph can call can cross each other, but not bringing about some vertices. So we can, uh, if you pull this one, so so that this edge will run over that one. It's a, it's it's allowed. Right. So and once you have that, then for instance you'd have that um that is there, and uh, now this vertex you can allow it to sit somewhere here. Okay, something like this. Now, we just moved the vertices. Can you analyze the degrees of these two graphs? For instance, I mean, if you have, what is what is the degree of, uh, of this vertex here? Okay, this one is of degree three. Okay, and this one, um, so this one is degree three, and this one is also degree three. So it's the same degrees as the original. Right, degree two, degree two, degree two. So surely these two graphs here are isomorphic. Okay, um, uh, but I know that you can draw so many, even like that, but it's easy to draw the isomorphic ones because you just move the vertex. You can just move the vertex in and distort the shape. But uh, in the process of distorting the shape, you're able to get a graph that is isomorphic. Okay, um, without a lot of reasoning anyway but that looks like it's different, you know? But also, yeah, uh, the adjacent, the adjacency is preserved, such that the vertices of, uh, of a given degree that are adjacent here are also adjacent there. For instance, we have that here, the vertices of degree three are adjacent vertices, okay? Right, and so here also, they're also adjacent. And that is one property of the, of the isomorphic graphs um, that the isomorphic graphs preserve adjacency. So you can have another graph, but the adjacent vertices in one graph, the corresponding vertices in one graph um, that are adjacent remain adjacent in the in the next graph. Okay, in particular, isomorphic graphs can be easily seen by just moving vertices and making them look different when they're actually the same. Okay, next question. Right, let's look at the list of, um, now I was speaking about these yesterday. So you can be given things like degrees, right? So at this point, like least, the least of degrees, right? The least of degrees of the vertices of a graph arranged in non-decreasing order is called a degree sequence. Look at this. This is a good question. I decided to bring this one because it is so good. Why is it so good? Because it's giving us a definition. They're defining a degree sequence for us so that we can be sure what a degree sequence is. A very rare situation. The list of degrees of the vertices of a graph arranged in non-decreasing order is called a degree sequence non-decreasing so what does it mean to say non-decreasing you have is it the same as saying increasing order <laughs> obviously not because non-decreasing would mean um it can be uniform order okay so um, like in this case it can be once only very of degree one right but now the least of the degrees so this you can learn but no one is going to ask you to define anything uh, we don't ask, in this module, you're not asked to define things, but you're asked to apply the definitions to situations. So the list of the degrees of the vertices of a graph arranged in non-decreasing order is called a degree sequence of the graph. Okay. we here. So let's look at this one. Draw a graph with a degree sequence this, so they can give us a degree sequence. What is the degree sequence? Is the least of the degrees of the vertices of a graph arranged in non-decreasing order. Okay, so we've just uh, uh, found a new definition there. Right, so let's uh, uh, draw uh, that such a graph. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. 
This is a very interesting question. Does this one even exist? Right, such a graph. Right, so we note that such a graph does not exist. Why? Does not exist because the vertex This is a very important, uh, interesting example where the graph does not exist. The degree, the degree sequence is there, but does not exist. Why? We analyze that. You say, why is it that somebody cannot be able to draw such a graph here? Right, such a graph does not exist because the vertex of degree five Right, has to have, right, has to have um, five neighbors. Mm -hmm. Five neighbors. Just to right click here. Right, is to have five neighbors. Right, is to have uh, right, has to have five neighbors. While the graph. only has um, four vertices. So if you are to suppose to draw a graph with this degree sequence, we, we see that such a graph does not exist. Why? Such a graph does not exist uh, um, because the vertex of degree five has to have five neighbors. This vertex of degree five has to have five neighbors, while the graph only has four vertices. Okay, so that is the point. So this graph cannot exist at all but very interesting just to note that it's a very very good example what is the meaning of the description here okay somebody can try to draw the graph and see the kind of challenges you're experiencing because if you are supposed to have um, a vertex of degree five then it would mean that you have a vertex here it must be of degree five but we can't draw so many edges here because um, we can see that such a graph does not exist because the vertex of degree five has to have five neighbors. It must have five neighbors. While the graph has only has four vertices. Right, so if it is four vertices, then you can have a vertex, for example, in one attempt, and then now, how is it that this one is degree five? Because these edges are out. So now attempt to construct this graph or to draw this graph, you can see that no, this one must have degree five. Okay, then it means that there must be five incident edges, but they can't be five incident edges because of that. Because they are, this graph is only four vertices. Um, one, two, three, four. So yeah, three, four. These ones two are out. 
Okay, sorry. That is the situation. All right. We continue and look at the next question. Okay, let's look at another example. Now, you need to, in this case, draw two non-isomorphic non graphs with the degree sequence triple one. Okay, let me uh, see what uh, you're thinking there. Can we, can we go back to the previous question? We did something similar and we got uh, this. Yes, one. yes. Okay, that's fine. Let's just look at that. Right, okay. Right, we're looking at that to see exactly. Um, yeah, we did a similar question, I remember, yeah? Right, trying to open that up. Right, so here we're to draw a graph with degree sequence, so for instance, uh, triple one and triple three, or say why no such graph exists. Right, obviously we noted that at this point, if you add the degrees, the sum of the degrees is actually an even number. Okay, thus we are um, dealing with a graph of size six. Okay, because it's two times the size of the graph. And then this this size, what is the size? What does it mean to speak of the size of the graph? It's, it's size is the number of the edges of the, of the graph. Right, according to the first theorem of graph theory. Yeah, I was saying according to the first theorem of graph theory because the first theorem of graph theory says when you add the degrees, you must get twice the size of the graph. And now if you factor the, the number 12 to be two times a certain number, then the certain number that is multiplied by two would therefore be the size or the number of the, um, the number of the edges of the graph. For example, so now, um, is it possible to construct this one? Yes, it was possible. Why? Because we have three variables of degree three, uh, of degree one, excuse me, so it's one, two, three. And then we have three uh, variables of degree three each. So this one is one, two, three, degree three, one, two, three edges, degree three, one, two, three edges, degree three. So as a consequence, it's possible therefore to construct this uh, graph up here. Okay, but also because the sum of the edges um, add to uh, twice an even number, uh, but not only that, but it's a balanced uh, uh, graph because um, you have enough supply of um, the uh, the vertices. Okay, for example, if we were to drop some vertex here, it would be it would. For instance, if you were to drop a vertex of degree one here. And make and, and 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 give an example where you have two vertices of degree one. So you'd have degree one, degree one. Then if this one was not there, it was going to bring a challenge because it would it would not be possible to draw this graph, right? Because now if this one is out, then it means that this vertex here is going to be of degree two. And if one to force it to be of degree three, we can't because um, we would need a vertex for it to uh, for us to draw an edge. Okay, so yeah, um, very interesting questions. This expect them in the first uh, introductory questions on graph theory. Um, these are the most basic of things you can play around. So you try to construct the graph. Sometimes it's realized that you just run into trouble, into into a challenge because maybe uh, you realize okay, but this can't be constructed because I have I don't have I will need more uh, vertices something like that. Okay, but yeah, but, but, but thanks for the question because it's very similar to that. So we constructed that graph there, but this one was good because it had enough vertices for us to construct. But um, unlike this one here, um, this one does not. Okay, this one does not. Okay, that's fine. The, so this one does not, for example, uh, why does it not? It does not because, okay, okay, it was the previous one that couldn't. Okay, let's look at this one now. Um, that was B. Um, okay, I just I want to give another example. Okay, I'm gonna give it just here. Okay, let's look at this one first. Right, here we need to draw two non-isomorphic graphs with degree sequence that is it possible well i mean the first test is if you add all these it must be an even number 
um, for us to be in a position to construct the graph. Right, so for instance, if you add this is three, six, 10. So yes, it, it might be possible. It might be possible. So now let's draw two non-isomorphic graphs with this degree sequence. Okay, so you try anything here. You literally try anything, anything. Okay, so we have degree one, so we can have degree one, right? So if you have degree one, you actually uh, do that, uh, right? Identify that accordingly. So you'd have degree one, K is degree one, right? Like this, for example, okay, you can always keep trying. Okay, saying degree one, then you do degree one. Okay, so you have degree one, degree one, degree one. Now you can drop this one here. Um, To meet this one, so that this one is degree one, degree one, degree one, degree three. And then you can just put these ones here. So degree two, degree two. And, okay, I need to avoid, uh, we need to avoid uh, Labeling these degrees. Okay. So we avoid labeling these degrees. Okay, why do we avoid? Because now normally the vet the labels have meaning. They mean the vertices themselves. So we uh, if you put the one, if we put numbers here, they mean it's vertex one. Um, it doesn't mean it's actually the degree, so we don't write degrees like that. Right now, here's another one. So we can do one, two, three, four, like that. So you can do this. This is degree one, degree one. So this would be a disconnected graph, disconnected. So um, you have vertex here, uh, an edge there, an edge here, and an edge there. Okay, so we have these two non-isomorphic graphs with degree sequence that. Um, so, I mean, these two graphs, are they isomorphic? Because we're supposed to draw, what is the instruction? Draw two non-isomorphic graphs with a degree sequence. Does this one have the degree sequence? Okay, this one has degree one, degree one. So there are three vertices of degree one, degree two, degree two. Um, there are two vertices of degree two and the vertices of degree three. Um, right, so here, this one here has two vertices of degree, um, there's degree one, degree one, and then degree one. So there are three vertices of degree one in this graph, but now a very important example of a graph that is disconnected. So you have like two pieces um, that you can draw, but that constitutes a single graph. Um, also now you look at the degrees. So here you have degree two, degree two, and then degree three. Uh, one, two, three. So, yeah, so this graph and this graph are clearly non isomorphic. Why would they be not isomorphic? You need to um, obviously observe that, observe adjacency, observe adjacency. That in this graph, for instance, the vertex of degree three is adjacent to uh, the vertices of degree two. Right. But here, let's check the vertex of degree three. Is, is it adjacent to the vertices of degree two? Right, so there's a vertex of degree uh, two there, there's a vertex of degree two there, right. Um, now you note um, also one other thing. Would um, a vertex of degree three is actually um, here adjacent to a vertex of degree one, right? So also here vertex of degree three is adjacent to vertex of degree one, right? Um, but also now you observe um, vertex adjacency. If you are to look at whether a one-to-one -one correspondence um, can be given. Okay, here um, the vertex of degree two, each vertex of degree two is adjacent to vertex of degree one and a vertex of degree three. Let's look at the vertex of degree two here must be adjacent to, if they were to be isomorphic, a vertex of degree two must have the same neighbors, neighbors of the same degrees. But here, 
uh, this variance of degree two has a neighbor of degree one, um, has an adjacent vertex, that's the word we, we use, has an adjacent vertex of degree one, adjacent vertex of degree three. But here, there's a vertex of degree two, it's um, not uh, having a neighbor, it's having a neighbor of degree three, okay, but is it having a neighbor of degree one, this vertex of degree two? Uh, it's not, this vertex of degree two is not adjacent to vertex of degree one. Right, so with that observation, because even this vertex of degree two is not adjacent to this vertex, because adjacency means there must be um, an edge that links them. Then the, the, those vertices are what, are adjacent. All right, so with these two graphs, therefore qualify to be um, non-isomorphic graphs. Right, I want to give also another example. Right, here's another example. In this example, we ask the question, um, so you, the students uh, must be able to um, to draw, here's an example, they must be able to draw a graph with degree. With degree sequence. Gray graph with degree sequence, uh, right. So if we just give another example here, okay, if we one, two, five of the ones, two, four, five of the ones, and then a five, right. Or we'll say, why no such graph exists? Okay. We continue. Right, draw a graph with degree sequence that will say why no such graph exists. Two, four, five. Okay, first and foremost, now according to the first theorem of graph theory, some of the degrees of a graph must be twice the number of the edges for the graph to um, to be possible to construct, to be constructible. So um, obviously here we can see that if you add the five ones and this one, it gives um, 10, which is two by five. So you can draw a graph of size, potentially of size five, because it's 10. The, this is 10 and then 10 is two by five, right? So now can this be constructed? Let's see. So you have a vertex here. Um, right, you have a vertex here. Um, right. Um, right, let's see what we have here. Right, so you can have a vertex there like that. It must have degree five. You must have one vertex of degree five. So one, two, three, four, five. This vertex must be degree five. By good luck, then we have these ones, other ones of degree one, which are five of them. So it becomes so possible to easily, to easily construct the graph. It becomes possible to just what? easily construct the graph. So yes, we can be in a position to construct uh, this graph there. Okay. Right, so um, let's look at some more examples. Sketch, let's sketch again. Right, you must be able to sketch two non-isomorphic disconnected graphs on eight vertices. With each vertex of degree two, explain why your two graphs are non-isomorphic. 
okay, how do we answer this question? We have learned a lot. And one would just think that we know how to draw pretty much. We understand how to construct a graph. What graphs are constructible when the sum of the degrees are an even number, and then we can write them as two by the size of the graph. Now, is, is this one uh, possible to sketch two non-isomorphic non disconnected graphs on eight vertices, okay? Disconnected, but now non-isomorphic. Okay, the word disconnected is coming in. I used the word disconnected at some point. For one graph, uh, we drew that, that that was in pieces. So the formal word obviously is disconnected. But these graphs themselves must be non-isomorphic. But they must be on eight vertices with each vertex of degree two. Let's start. Now we can do this. Okay, so we draw this. Vertices of degree three. Okay, this one, um, it's it's uh, it's 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 K three. Okay, it's a complete graph on three vertices, right? So, but what we need eight of them, so we can do five more. Because it must be disconnected. So disconnected means that the graph must be um two pieces of graphs. pieces of graphs okay so but we just need the graphs to be on eight vertices that's all so surely these two graphs are on eight vertices three by plus five is eight right so that is the one we drew and we do another one but well, this one is just one graph actually but it's it's said to be a disconnected graph right so you can have another one on four vertices, like this. Like this. Um, but also this one is four, four. Uh, vertices, so we have eight vertices. So, yes, these are the kinds of graphs disconnected. Okay, with each vertex of degree two, very important extra condition. Each vertex of degree two, you can see here degree two, degree two, degree two, each one is of degree two. So, this and also is on eight vertices. Um, each or eight vertices, eight vertices. They did not, uh, they were not specific when it comes to, um, but they said we need to explain, we need to explain why uh, you, the two graphs are what? We need to explain why the two graphs are not isomorphic. Okay, so we continue. So we continue. Right. So we have that, we have that. Right, so we have explain, explain. Um, we need to explain why your two graphs are non-isomorphic so they can ask you to explain. So let's explain. Right, so because we, by explaining, we understand the graphs more in the process. Right, the two graphs, are non-isomorphic the two graphs are non-isomorphic because because the first graph because the first graph consists of consists of a three circuit because the first graph consists of a this is a three circuit this is a, a five second but this one is four uh, two four seconds right so it consists of a three second and a five second Right, the phase graph consists of a three second and a five second. 
while the second graph while the second graph consists of of two consists of two four seconds Okay, this one now consists of two, four seconds, so they're not isomorphic, they're not isomorphic because of that. So in other words, what is the meaning of this example here? This one is saying to us, you can have the vertices of a given degree that are adjacent accordingly. Um, like in this point, uh, every vertex is of degree two, and the vertices of degree Two are adjacent to each other. Each vertex of degree two um, is adjacent to two other vertices of degree two. But now, because that is not enough, it's not enough to justify because you still can have the degrees that are the same, but now the graphs are not isomorphic. How? This explains the, the notion of using the circuits. Okay, so if you realize that, okay, you have um, the degrees that are the same, um, then you come to the circuits. Yes, please. You have a question? No question. Uh, what is disconnected? Oh, yes. <laughs> what, what is disconnected? The disconnected, word? yes. Disconnected means that um, yeah. the graph is not continuous. It's, 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 it consists of separate uh, pieces of graphs. Or it's actually constituted by uh, separate subgraphs. Um, and obviously, these are called subgraphs, like subsets. So this is a subgraph, another subgraph, but they both constitute a graph and, and now they're disconnected. So it's actually a very good way to just emphasize the use of the word disconnected in the, in the, in the case of graphs, because these two are disconnected. They are one graph, but disconnected because um, we can see that there's no urge that connects the two subgraphs up here. Um, the same applies to um, obviously these two graphs here. And these graphs are, in each case, actually disconnected. Okay, let's uh, look at more graph uh, examples. Okay, these uh, cover the basics on the graphs. Okay, let's draw the complement. We looked at the complement last time, but let's uh, understand the complement more. How do we find the complement of this one? Right, so the complement. Draw the complement of this graph, so the complement. The complement is given by what is the complement given by? So at this point, then we to draw the complement, we normally just draw the vert the vertices first. So we draw the vertices first. After having drawn the vertices, then we connect the vertices that were not connected there. Okay. So how do we do that? So like there was no edge here. So you can draw an edge here. Similarly, there was no edge here. You can draw um, an edge there like that. There was no edge there. You can draw an edge here. There was no edge here. You draw an edge there like that um like that okay what is next okay now more edges um for instance after this we've actually drawn an edge here but there was no edge there as well 
so we can draw an edge here like that uh, similarly um we have an edge here we can draw another edge here like that um right 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 let me see now anything else um um, right, that's all. It looks that way. Right, so obviously it looks like it is all. So we have, therefore, the complement is given by that one there. We looked at the complement last time, but I brought this one because it's quite a, a very simple one to draw. Um, it doesn't have lots, uh, lots of edges. So I decided that we uh, just recap on the on the, on the notion of um, of the complement, but by looking at um, an easier graph to draw. Next question. Okay, tomorrow, obviously, you'll be seeing graphs like this, um, normally at the beginning of the exam. Um, right, the, the things to look at on the degrees, uh, degree sequences and things and growing graphs, normally, obviously, appear at the beginning, but sometimes they don't even appear at all. And you can just, in the exam, come across this one as your very first question. And now these will say, Determine whether the following two graphs are isomorphic or not. If they are, give a vertex correspondence. So if they are isomorphic, then we must be able to give a vertex correspondence. If they are not, then give a reason why. Okay, let's analyze this. First and foremost, are they isomorphic, these two graphs, uh, or not? Okay, these two graphs look like this one has just been rotated. Looks that way, something like that. You know how this component appears to be so. So they they can be attempting. They're attempting to um to to, to actually make somebody think um. To make they're attempting to make somebody think that they are actually isomorphic graphs, but but we realize that these two graphs are not isomorphic, right? The two graphs, right? We note that the two graphs are not isomorphic. Why? Why? It's not enough to just say they're either isomorphic or not. We need to substantiate. Right, the first graph. Here's the reason. The first graph. The first graph has four. Has four three seconds. Has four three seconds. What are the three seconds? Okay, we're gonna um, state them here. So we can look at the second one. Five. So we go from one to five in view of the first graph, one to five. Then we go to six. After six, um, we go to back to one. So that is a three second, this one here. One, five, six, one. Okay. Let's look at another three second to see if they have the same three seconds. Three seconds will be the easiest ones because there are too many triangles in this case. So they are the easiest ones to, to first try to compare. Um, obviously, okay, right, next. There's another one. Vertex five. You go to six. You go to seven. Back to five. So we have taken this one and now we're taking this one. So five, six, seven, then five. So we we found another three, what? Three seconds, but are they the same number? If you can exhaust all the three seconds here, they must be the same number there. 
Right, there's another one. Five, seven, four, five. Five, seven, four, five. Five, seven, four, five. So that is also another three seconds. And two, um, three, eight, two, two, three, eight, two. Okay. We have somehow exhausted them because somebody can just say we have a three second here, one, we have a three second there. We have a three second there, and we have a three second there. So we can easily see the first graph is four three seconds. Okay, so it's easier to see. Um, right, so this one, there is one here, there is two there, there is three there. We can see that, so it's easier to realize that this one has sort of those three seconds are sort of uh, three uh, triangles there. And, and that is enough to say the two graphs are therefore not isomorphic. Okay, very interesting example here. Um, because sometimes it can take time to see with, uh, if the graphs are, uh, some graphs are very subtle and they might not be isomorphic, whereas they're attempting to think that, uh, to make somebody think they're isomorphic. While, while the second graph while the second graph only has only has three it has three three seconds yeah you see one two three okay let's list them because there are not so many Right, you start with A, E, F, A. A, E, F, A. Okay, you come to the second one, G. G, B, H, G. G, B, H, G. Next. H, G, B, that. H, B, C, H. So, um, we've just easily listed the three seconds, and therefore these two graphs are not isomorphic. Very, very important observation. And now, uh, obviously one can look at also the experience we've acquired um, to show that two graphs are not isomorphic because the truth is, um, we use examples in mathematics to, to learn. From definitions, we build examples. And examples, from examples, even theory is built. Theory is built by examples because when we observe, the examples normally um, demonstrate a pattern. From the pattern, we even develop more theorems um, that constitute uh, theories. Okay, next question. For an answer, the, the, the two graphs are not isomorphic and stated why. Okay, I made space available there. Proof that the graph below does not contain a Hamilton second. Right, so um, we're gonna prove this one. We're gonna prove this one. Right, so let's look at it together. How do we even uh, look at this graph here? And how do we prove this here? How do we even prove this here? Okay, so we're gonna look at this and attempt to prove this together. Right, and attempt to prove these together. Right, 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 right. 
Okay, so just note that, note that, note that, note that, note that, note that. Okay, what is a Hamilton second first we define? All right, Hamilton. Hamilton circles. in paths right or circuits and paths a circuit in paths Right, these are second it and paths. Right, that visit. That visit. Each vertex. Each vertex in a graph. In a graph, exactly once. Exactly once. Right, Hamilton second and paths are second and paths that visit each vertex in a graph exactly once. So note that. So we continue. We continue. Prove that the graph below does not contain Hamilton second. Let's prove this. How do we even prove this? Too easy to prove. Right, here's the solution to the question. Right, what is the solution to this question? Since the vertices since the vertices C and D are both of degree two. Of degree two, we have we have to use the edges BC and CE. For vertex C, okay, we're going to analyze this together. For vertex C, as well, as the edges. BD and DE for vertex D okay Okay, well, I will explain this. This is called rule one of the Hamilton circuits. But then,
right but then we have a proper top circuit with a proper sub circuit the proper sub circuit if you start b b c b c e b b we have a proper sub circuit b c B. With a proper sub circuit contradicting contradicting rule two. Okay, rule two, what does rule two say? Rule two say there must be no proper sub circuit. That is rule two. So rule two says there must be no proper sub circuit, but there is a proper sub circuit here. What is a proper sub circuit? Well, um, a proper um, set. A proper subset from uh, from set theory um, is actually um, different from an improper. Well, improper would mean it equals the whole thing. For example, um, if one says A is a subset of B, okay, so this one is proper because it's smaller than the set B. Right, so, but if you look very carefully, um, if you look very carefully, you realize then that um, this one is improper. This one, if it is like this, is improper. Like that, so anyhow. Right, so what does rule one say? Right, since the vertices C and D are both of degree two, let's look at the vertices uh, of um, C and D, which is we need to analyze that. So if you look at the vertices C and D are both of degree two, we have to use the edges B, C, and C, E, right? Uh, B, C, and C, E for vertex C. B, C, and C for vertex C, as well, as the edge is BD and DE, BD and DE for vertex D. That is certainly rule one. What does rule one say, actually, of the rule one of the Hamilton circuits? What does it say? Right, we analyze that. Here is what rule one says. If a vertex if a vertex x has degree two both of the edges incident. incident okay so both of the edges incident both of the uh, edges incident to x must be
part of any Hamilton circuit. Okay. If a vertex X is degree two, both of the edges incident to X must be part of any Hamilton circuit. Let's look at it now. We are seeing here that since the vertices C and D are both of degree two, we have we have, have if a vertex X has degree two, both of the edges incident to X must be part of any Hamilton circuit. So there is this one of, of degree two. So both of the each edges incident to this must be part of a Hamilton circuit. So since the vertices C and D are both of degree two, we have to use the edges of uh, B, C and what? And C, D. So now we're then saying these edges um, incident to X must be part of a Hamilton circuit. So we use the edges B, C and C, D, right? As well as the edges B, D and what? B, D and D, E for so vertex D. That is rule one. But then we have a proper sub circuit um, contradicting rule two. If we use these edges here, then this becomes a proper sub circuit. What is a proper sub circuit? It is a circuit not containing all the vertices. Um, right, can be formed when building um, um, a Hamilton circuit. A proper sub circuit is a circuit not containing all the vertices. Right, so that is the fact, uh, that's the reason particularly that we have that um, this graph here does not contain um, a Hamilton circuit. So think of these and make sure you sort of understand in the view of the rules, um, right? But I think that I'm gonna state the rules for Hamilton seconds up there. Here are the rules. Here are the rules. All right. These are called the three. Right, these are called the three rules. What is rule one? Three rules for Hamilton seconds. Right, what are the three rules for Hamilton seconds? You analyze them now. There are three rules for Hamilton seconds. What is rule number one? I am just uh, want to state them so that you can have all the rules in full, and then we're gonna move on to the other things. Right, because these Hamilton seconds are very important, but they are a little bit tricky sometimes, so you need to uh, have the rules at uh, one's disposal. So let's give, let's state the rules. So what does rule one say? It actually says that if a vertex, right, if a vertex X has degree two. Uh, hello? Yes, please. Uh, can please, we please. skip the rules? I already have a screenshot okay. of the all right, all, all the rules. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. All right, good. Let's just keep them and let's just move on. Thank you. In fact, very good I stated that. Right, let's put another example now. That is about um, more graphs. Right, in view of this um, second court method, um, let's look at this particular problem. Right, second court method and planarity and planar graphs. Right, use the second code method to determine whether the graph below is planar 
Okay, this you can expect to find tomorrow. Um, right, if it is, give a planar drawing. If it is not, find a K33 or a, K, a K5 configuration. Okay, we discussed this and I want us to uh, discuss this because it's extremely important uh, there, but it's, uh, it's way too easy there and I've made the graph available at the back. Okay. How do we um, analyze this graph and how do we um, give a planar drawing of these here? How do we give a planar drawing of these? So we we think about these together. Right. So first things first, what is the first thing that we, we do always? We identify a Hamilton second. So we use we use the Hamilton we use the Hamilton second right so we're gonna use the Hamilton second one five six two uh, three. Seven, um, eight, um, four, one. Okay, let's start. One, five, six. Okay, we're just looking at Hamilton second. That this is all the vertices. Six, then two, three, four, five. Then seven, then eight, then four, then one. Okay, so we use the Hamilton. So we use the Hamilton second. Um, that one first we choose the Hamilton second because it visits all of them. How we show are we that it visits all of them? So you have up to five, you have six, um, you have two. It doesn't matter what you choose, um, uh, right? But it must visit. Uh, Every um, uh, every vertex once, right? You have two, then from there you have three, you have seven, you have eight, you have four, and then you have one, like this. So surely uh, this visits all the vertices, so it qualifies to be Hamilton second, but it begins from one and it ends at one, and hence a second, not just a path that um, actually ends anywhere else right now by inside outside symmetry by inside um outside symmetry outside symmetry we choose One, two, to be okay inside. So we're going to do this. We're going to draw um, a circle like this, and then we position. One, five, six, two. I'm just putting these uh, vertices here in that sequence. Two, then there's three, then seven, then eight, then four, then one. Okay. So uh, with this is the Hamilton second, and we have because it visits all the sec. It's a second that visits all the vertices of the of the graph, and then now we have put the vertices over there. Okay, good. Let's see what else we have. Um, all right. So by inside outside symmetry, we choose one two. Um, to be inside. Full stop. Right. So, in other words, um, 
Now we choose one, two to be inside. So we have one, two, because it's the first one. Right, so after that, what do we do? Then we continue. Okay, there are certain things we call codes, and I want to mention the idea of a code. And as far as we know a code from school, right, so, but there are certain codes that you need to uh, note, okay, there are certain codes that you need to um, understand, um, right, so when I speak of um, codes in this case, um, right, we're going to speak of chords in this case. All right, but let's continue first. So we choose one, two, by inside outside symmetry, you choose one, two um, to be inside. Then we continue with the process. Right, we continue with the process. Then five, seven. Is to be outside. Is to be outside. Right, so now five seven is to be outside. Now let's look at that one. Right, so if you look at five seven, right, so because now if you draw five seven, um, it has to be outside. Why? Because um, it's gonna cross. So if we draw it from here to there, it's going to cross. So we need to draw it outside to avoid um, crossing in our attempt to see if it's very really plain or not. So we avoid crossing. So 5, 7, we can do this. Okay. Then 6, 8. Okay, now we look at 6, 8. Where is 6, 8? Right, 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 right. Okay, then six, eight. Six, eight cannot. Cannot be drawn. Okay, let's look at six, eight. Right, if you draw like this, it's going to cross. But also, if you draw outside like this, it's also gonna gonna cross. So we can see therefore that six eight cannot be cannot be drawn. Um, hence, so if you look at six eight, so six eight we can make it dashed like this. Hence, the graph is not planar. Right, after this, the following is a A33 configuration. K33 configuration. Is a K33 configuration. Okay, so what do we have of the graph? Goodness me, um, right, so of the graph. Now let's see what this one. 
um, right uh, configuration of the graph. The following is the K33 configuration of the graph. What is the K33 configuration of the graph? Right. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm, we continue. Right, so we draw this. One, two, three. Right, one, two, three. Then we have one, two, three. Okay, then do this. Um, we have this. Right, so, um, then you have this with that. There you have this. And then you have that. So you have one, seven, six. So vertex one, vertex seven, vertex six, vertex two, vertex five, vertex uh, eight. And then you have vertex three. And then you have vertex four, like that. All right, so we have this. Uh, this one is a K33 configuration because K33 means what? Um, it's without the dots in the middle of the um, of the edges. But once you put the dots there, um, they become, um, you actually therefore have a configuration. But I want us to, Analyze this very carefully because in view of the Hamilton second we chose in the beginning. So you have that one goes to five, goes to six, right? And uh, go to two, right? From two, we go to three. From three, we go to seven. From seven. Uh, hello? Yes, please. Uh, how did you get um this uh one seven six two five eight? Yes. Okay, how did you, why did you uh, put it like that? Yes. Okay, that's a good question. Let's just discuss how that is um first and foremost achieved. Right. So first and foremost, what you need to realize uh, is the fact that we actually um desire uh from these a K three three. Um, configuration so a k33 configuration um because we have already seen that is done planar and therefore we need three three vertices uh right so um if we need three three vertices we focus on the hamilton circuit right from the hamilton circuit um we realize that we need a set of six uh vertices and these six vertices themselves must actually be vertices that are part of the original graph. So for example, we start with the original, with this first vertex we chose in our Hamilton circuit vertex one. Right, and then now one goes to five. And you can see it goes to five and that gives us um, one more vertex at the bottom and we go down diagonally. Right, and then after that, we have um, that five goes to six. So five will go to six. So first we just position the dots three, three. And then now we just trace, uh, we just circulate the this, um, um, this Hamilton circuit. So if you put three, three, because we're speaking about a K33 configuration, then you start saying, okay, one goes to five. Then five goes to six, you put this one. Right, and then from six, you need to go to two. Right, so from six, we go to two. Right, and then from two, you go to three. Like that. 
And then from three, you must go to seven. And then when you get to seven, from seven, you must go to eight. So from seven, you can you need to go to eight. So you need to obviously just look at the pattern and how we just run through these. Because from seven, you go to eight. So eight. Now, obviously, if you're at seven, then you can think, can eight be here or there? Okay, so obviously, it must form this second at the end of the day. So seven goes to eight. Then from eight, you go to four. Right. And then from four, you go back to one. So in other words, it is actually these that has been rewritten to form this K33 graph. But how do we position the two, the five, and that? First, we need to put the three dots and then just follow accordingly. How do we, we just move normally. So we have this path we trace always, right? So we move from one to five, then from here to there, we go to six. Always do this. Right, when you get to six now, you need to move, right? And the, the practice is to move from a six that is here to, um, to a two. And then we sort of go back because from six, then you go back to just below one. And then you go to three. And then you go to seven. Then you sort of go back now to where you came from at the extreme. Just below six, you get an eight. So that is how we get. But first, you just put the the three dots, three three, and 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 now not only the three dots, but you need to be able to draw the K three three always. Okay. So first, you just draw the K three three. Okay. What is the K three three? The complete graph on six vertices, three three at the top. So you put this one. This one, that one. So you put one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we do this. Right, so when we do this, that is the K33. So we do what? We connect to this one. We connect to this one. We connect this one. So you must draw this K33 and then just put the vertices there. So, but how do you draw it? You must just learn how to draw it because it's, it's, it's always the same, K33. Right, so it's always like this. Um, then you go like that. Right, and then you go this way. And then you go oh, from here to there, from here to there, right? See now, this one goes from here to there. This one goes from here to there. Uh, okay, three. Okay, we have that. So this is a K33 graph. Then what do we do then? We just draw this K33 without these numbers, without the vertex labels. And now um, we therefore uh, are able to trace, but now you look at the path, the way we move up there, right? You start from one, then you go to five, then you go to six, you go like V. You take the shape V. Um, following this sequence, you pose, you put the numbers there. Okay, uh, that's just the idea. Right, and uh, now, but also I want to mention the certain things we call, uh, because this is called the second code method. This is called the second code method. So there are certain things, therefore, we call codes. Um, right, so... Um, Right, so you choose a circuit, a Hamilton circuit like we saw. Then you pick um, um, a chord to draw. Right, you pick a chord to draw. 
how do you pick a quote? Like you chose this uh, Hamilton ticket. We chose this one. After we chose this Hamilton ticket, then we pick. We we did what we pick. We picked. We picked um, um, a code. Right. We picked a code. What is a code here, actually? Um, given this graph, what would qualify as a code and what would not? And uh, that's what I want to drive at here. Right. So we picked our, our first code to draw. Right. And then our first code was, for instance, um, we chose one, two. Right, we chose one, two to draw. Because one, two is an urge in, 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 in our graph. One, two is an urge in our graph. But if one, two is an edge in our graph, we can pick it. But then one, two, it becomes a chord in the circle. It becomes a chord in the in the circle. So because we drew the one two there, but because in other words, um, you really can see that one two is an urge, you know, a graph. But obviously, as drawn there, it's a chord. But if you look at one two in these here, in the Hamilton second, it's something else. The one two is not just. Uh, is not just successive vertices uh, in the Hamilton circuit. Okay, just note that. We continue. Okay, for the graph G below, we determine this. Right, so the chromatic number of G, you give a minimal coloring and a proof that a similar number of colors um, is not possible. Okay, we recap on the chromatic number. We looked at the chromatic number, but let's just recap on it. Right, so um, what is the chromatic number of this graph here? This uh, spent some time on uh, as a reason. Okay, first we note that the graph The graph uh, contains triangles. The graph contains triangles. So that the chromatic number is at least three. Because it contains triangles, and a triangle has three um, colors, different colors. I mean, the chromatic number of a triangle is three, but it's at least it's three or more here because we have just more than triangles, right? So, what is the next thing that we do next? Um, we try. We try to color the graph. With three, with three colors. Because we can see triangles, we try to color these with um three colors okay the triangles are easier but yeah there are other things um that you can use here i'm going to explain another method as well that you can use right for the triangle For the triangle A, for the triangle A, B, G, A, 
we color. A blue. B red. And B green. Then since okay, so we call this one red. Um B. no, I'm saying we color A blue. Let me just use a different color, otherwise there's gonna be some confusion here. Okay, yeah, we color A blue, that's what we're saying here. So we color this one blue. Um, G, we call it red. And B, we call it green. Okay. Okay, like that. Then since um, C is adjacent, okay, hence the word adjacent here. Since C is adjacent to G, And BC has to be colored, has to be colored blue. Let's analyze what this means. Okay. For the triangle A, B, G, A, what is the triangle? A, G, B, A. Right, we color A blue. Right, we color A blue. G red and, 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 and B green. Right, then since C is adjacent to G and B, C has to be colored blue. Okay, I want us to um, refine this and write it correctly. I want us to refine this and write it correctly. Then since C is adjacent to, C is adjacent to what? K, C, but we can see it's adjacent to B and G or to G and B. C has to be colored blue. That's what. Can I put maybe a full stop here? Otherwise, there's going to be confusion. Since C is adjacent to that, I need to put a comma because I started with since. Right. Since C is adjacent to G and B, C has to be colored blue. So we make it blue. Like this, goodness me, my goodness. Okay, let's see what you get. Right. Um, next. We note that. We know that for the triangle, we know that for the triangle AEFA, okay, let's look at the triangle AEFA, this one here. 
Um, what is it? Is the virus is E and F? Have to be colored. They have to be colored. By red and green. Let's look at that one. It has to be colored by red and green. Right, so next we note that um, next we note that for the triangle AEFA, -A, -E -A, the vertices E and F. E and F have to be colored by red and green. So we can do red, green. Why is uh, E red and F green? Okay, that's a good question uh, because this is blue. So we need different colors because now we can choose even this, you can make this one green and this red because um, they cannot be adjacent uh, because adjacent blue cannot be blue. So it must be a different color uh, because this one uh, is already blue. You can't make this one blue, but we have two colors that are available. So we can use red and green interchangeably um, there because this one is blue, right? So um, that's the thing. So next we note uh, that for the triangle AEFA, -A, the vertices C and F have to be colored by red and green. Okay, so you can, easily, you can also do green and red because if you make this one red, um, these are not adjacent uh, vertices as such because adjacent vertices must, be, must have an edge, one edge that connects them. So as a consequence, these are not adjacent vertices. Um, so a person who make this one, this one red is not wrong. Okay, because what is wrong is can be to make this one blue, because this one is already blue. So blue, blue uh, adjacent vertices are unacceptable in coloring. Okay, next we continue. Um, let's see now. <clears throat> Right, 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 right. Um, red and green, red and green. But then, but then, vertex, vertex D. Let's look at now vertex D. It's here. Um, will be adjacent. Okay, first we look at adjacency will be adjacent uh, vertex will be adjacent to red to red green and blue vertices. Okay, let's look at that one. Where is vertex D? This one is adjacent to what? It's adjacent red, but it's also adjacent green, but it's also adjacent to blue. If we started with the triangle of three colors here, blue, red, and green, can we make D blue? We can't because it's already blue. Okay, we pick from our bucket of colors, green, but it's already adjacent green, so we can't make the green. Okay, there's another color red. We can't make it red because there is, so this D forces us to look for another color that is different from the three. And hence now this one suggests we need to look for the fourth color because the three colors surely for this graph are not enough. Right, so 
um, we can. Therefore, because it's a question like this, uh, or a couple of questions like this tomorrow, we can therefore not. But generally, you don't need to explain like this um, a lot. You need to be very brief in the way. You need to say the chromatic number. So you need to say there's a triangle, and so the chromatic number is at least three. And then you start coloring this and say, you can write a list like this. Let A be blue, red, uh, B green, and so on. So it, it doesn't really have to be, you can even change the presentation, but it's just that normally is written like this for clarity when during discussions. But you can write the things, uh, uh, tables. We can use tables to do this. Okay, we're gonna look at that. We can therefore not color not color the vertices the vertices with with only with only three colors okay hence we, we therefore we we can therefore not color with three. Hence, the chromatic number of G is four or more, at least four. We now give. We now give a four coloring. Of the vertices of the graph. Of the graph. So it means therefore we have blue, red, green, yellow. So we need a fourth color, yellow. Because now the others, uh, the three first three are not sufficient. Right, so in other words, we're gonna make this one yellow. Right, if you make this one yellow, what color could, can any of these be uh, take? For instance, um, you have, like the vertex J, what color can the vertex J take? Or what color can the vertex H take? Let's start with H. Right, look at H, we already have green and red. So can H be blue? For example, um, yes, there's nothing wrong with allowing H to be blue because it's not adjacent to any color. So we come to this observation here. So um, we can make the blue ones, we can make um, A, C, J. Okay, A, C, um, J. Even J, you can make it blue. Doesn't matter, you, you choose this. It's, it's quite subjective, but it must not contradict, it must not have who are adjacent vertices having the same color. Red, you can choose vertex F, G, and I. Okay, so you can make this one red, but you could also make G red. You can also make F red. Um, let me see, yes. It doesn't matter anyway, so, okay, let me see. Um, we made F green. So in view of our choice, if you make 
F green, you put it here and you remove it. Doesn't matter. But make sure you have all the pieces at the end of the day. Okay, so you can have, because we just made F green. Okay. What else do we have here? What can H be? Let's look at that. From our bucket of colors. Okay, if we choose um, this one, E. Is E, what color is E? E is red. Okay, you put E red. Then what's green? Right, so you have F is green, but also you have B is green. Right? What about H? Right, we can choose H to be what? <laughs> right, because we've already chosen this one to be green, red. So if it's green and red here, you can use what? You can use any of the colors. Right, so if you choose green and red, you are tempted to make this one um, blue. But obviously, you need to be very careful to do that. Right, suppose you make H blue. Suppose you make H green. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. E is. Can I just do this? Okay, because now you can have these colors just running around. It doesn't really matter what you do. Right. I think this is going to be easier. If I make, I want to, to synchronize everything to make sure we don't have colors that are mixed up. So if you make E green and you make F red, you make E green and you make F red. Okay, what would this, okay, then we come back here. Okay, let me just uh, remove uh, and make sure that we organize uh, the colors well here. In the table, because you must write this, for this table of the colors, indicate which vertex is what. Right, so if you have that, let's see quickly, please. Um, right, so, you have A is blue, right? So you have that A is blue from the, the diagram. So we put it here from the uh, uh, thing, from the graph, right? C is also blue. Okay, that's correct. J is also blue. Good, because you've chosen J blue. Okay, because you can choose anyhow. But every color, every vertex must be colored. Uh, right, red. F is red. Good, I've chosen F to be red. Um, G is what? Um, right, G is also red. Good. I. I is red. All right, then green. B is green. Also, E is green. Also, H is green. Now we're choosing H to be green, so we make this one green. So you have H is green. Right, once you choose H to be green, then you can see that you then you can allow this one to be blue-red. Okay. Let's see now what we're getting out of this. Yellow. Um, is D.
Okay. For what is the conclusion out of everything here now? Here comes the conclusion. And the conclusion is these four coloring these four coloring shows that show that chi of g which is the chromatic number of g is four or less okay so we needed four colors or less and the It follows that. It follows that the chromatic number of G is therefore four. It's therefore four, and, and we've answered uh, this question there. Okay, we've answered uh, this question there. All right, next question. Right, so in this question, we need to determine whether uh, this graph G is bipartite or not. Is it bipartite or not? Um, state any theorems used. Well, it is not. We'll, stay, we'll give the reasons, please. It is not. It is not bipartite. Because it contains odd staircase, e.g., A, B, G, A. Let's look at that one. It's not bipartite because it contains odd circuits. Let's look at that one. If you look at A, B, G, A. There's some triangles, right, which are odd circuits or circuits of odd length. Okay, um, there's a theorem called theorem two. Theorem two of our reference packer, we say a graph V is bipartite if and only if, if and only if. Every circuit in G is of even length. It is not bipartite because it contains odd circuits. There's a theorem too that says the graph G is bipartite. Okay, this is very important. What kind of a graph is bipartite? It is bipartite even only if every circuit is of even length. But here we have found uh, a circuit of odd length, of length three, this one. Oh, it is, this one is of size um, three. How is this one of size three? The size of a graph is determined by the number of the edges of the graph. So if the edges are three, then the size is three. Okay, so um, obviously it's a subgraph, this one, or just a, a subset of the graph there. Um, I think maybe it's enough. Um, I'm looking at the time. 
I can just uh, do some questions. Okay, let's, let's do this one. It's easy as well. Right, determine the number of the 20 digit frequencies of the letters of the alphabet. The alphabet is 26, 26 letters. Right, so determine the number of 20 digit sequences of the letters of the alphabet with each letter occurring at most once. Okay. To answer this question, we note that since each letter occurs, At most once, at most once, we have an arrangement. We have an arrangement without repetition that's the answer the answer is since each letter occurs at most once so it, either it occurs once or it does not occur at all. So the answer is that it is the permutation we're looking at the permutation of 26 letters section 20 at a time. Because we are looking at the 20 digit sequences. Permutation of 26 letters taking 20 at a time. And then what do we get? Which is 26 times 25 times and so on times Seven. So this is exactly what we are getting because we are speaking about the 20 digit sequences. So this is going to give us um, 20 because this means that we have 20 places here um, because there's place one, there's place two, and then this place 20. Right, so, but these can also be written as follows. Can also be written as 26 factorial divided by six factorial, which is exactly that. The reason is 26 factorial divided by six factorial, obviously is 26, 25 up to um, seven, then six factorial, you divide by six factorial and six factorial cancels, so is that then up to seven? So that's the answer. Right, so I think that it's some good time for us to say it's a good evening. So, yeah. Um, the assessment tomorrow is there at the appointed time. So I think that you need to think carefully and realize what 